This is a story about a boy named Jason. This is Jason's father. Hello. He is the rightful king of Iolcus. Now this is Peleus. He is Jason's uncle and the king's brother. This is what he did. He took over Jason's father's throne and imprisoned him. Peleus lived in constant fear of losing what he had taken so unjustly, so he planned to murder Jason at birth. However, Jason's mother deceived him by mourning as if Jason had died. Meanwhile, the infant was bundled off to the wilderness cave of Sharon the Centaur, where Jason grew up and was tutored. Now Peleus honored every god, except for Hera. Because of this, her plan to help Jason went into effect. She needed to know if he was a true hero for the task. When Jason came of age, he went out to reclaim the throne. On his way to Yaltus, there was a raging torrent. On the bank, there was an old woman who asked for his help in crossing. Would he give way to her request, or go about his business? Jason took the woman across with her, where halfway he staggered under her unexpected weight. This woman was in fact Hera in disguise. Jason had lost a sandal in the moving stream, and this would prove significant. Back at Yolkus, an oracle had warned Peleus, beware of a stranger who wears but a single sandal. When Jason arrived in Iolcus, he asserted his claim to the throne, but his uncle Peleus had no intention of giving it up, particularly to a one-shoot stranger. In hospitality, Peleus invited Jason to a banquet. During the course of the meal, he engaged him in conversation. So you say you've got what it takes to rule a kingdom. How do you get rid of someone giving you difficulties? Send him after the Golden Fleece? Not a bad idea. It's just the sort of quest for a hero. Tell you what, why don't you go? And so our hero accepts. Word quickly went around about his quest, and his recruitments came at the same speed. His company was known as the Argonauts, after his ship, the Argo. So one autumn day, they set out. However, it wasn't long before troubles hit them. Their first night's stop was on an island exclusively populated by women. Stinky one. After that, they settled at Salmedasis. The king welcomed them, but was in no mood for festive entertainment. He had offended the gods, and as a result, harpies invaded his territory. Every evening at dinner time, they dropped by to defecate on the king's food. Fortunately, two of Jason's crew were from the North Wind, given flying power, so they chased the harpies away. In thanks, the king informed a danger en route to the Golden Fleece. The Argonauts needed to pass through two clashing rocks called the Simplegades. The method was to set a bird to fly through to prematurely clash the rocks, giving them enough time to pass. And so, that's what they did. The Argonauts arrived in Colchis. The king and his people were not usually kind of strangers. However, on an earlier occasion, a newcomer was given extended hospitality. He came on a flying golden fleeced ram, sacrificed it, and hung the fleece in a grove. Now King Aetis disliked Jason on sight, but his daughter Medea fell in deep passion with Jason from the goddess Aphrodite. So the king calmed down, and allowed him to the golden fleece. All he required of Jason was, as a simple token of good faith, was the merest of finder chores. There were two bulls, and all Jason needed to do was harness them, plow the field, sow it, and reap the harvest in a single day. Oh, and these bulls had feet of sharp brass and bad breath. In fact, they breathed fire. Conveniently, Medea was a famous sorceress, which she slipped Jason a salve, making him proof against fire and brazen hoot. Now King Aetis had some dragon teeth, which when they hit the soil, fully armed warriors sprouted from the ground. Jason used these men to help him in his work. When the work was complete, Jason threw a stone at one of the men, which confused him to attack his neighbor. By then, all the seed men had turned against one another until not one of them was left standing. King Aida still did not want to give away the fleece, telling Medea this. But because of her passion from the love goddess, she turned to lead Jason to where the fleece was hidden. The fleece was guarded by a dragon, but with a sleeping potion Medea had, 
She put the monster to sleep, and Jason retrieved the fleece. Jason and his Argonauts then returned to Greece. So that's the end of his story. Actually, he dumps Medea. Too bad. The end.